Mr. Ludlow, great to see you. Hi, Mark, how are you? Demo number two. Demo number two. Titanium X. You're, um, set this up for us. I don't know if I hit the, maybe I hit the button. There we go. All right, and just before you do, um, disclaimer, we're showing the open text infrastructure. So we didn't create a data set. We're using our own data set. We changed some of the names to protect the innocent. Um, we've set up a vulnerability zoo that we call it. Um, and we show some of the vulnerability data. This is a separate area in our network where we do our testing, uh, but we're going to be showing our own infrastructure. We are, and even the spend, and we sort of turned down the spend so we wouldn't know exactly what it was as well. So yes, for sure. That's great. Steve, over to you. Why don't you set us up? So you're walking over here, and I'm thinking, here comes the CEO of our company. And what's your, what's your thoughts on machines and humans? Uh, uh, <laughs> Um, let the machines do the work. Let the machines do the work. So if the machines are going to do the work, um, we have, as it says there, about a half a million assets inside of OpenText right now in a very Discovered large Discovered through our software. Discovered through our software. And there's no way humans could do the work in this case, right? So we have agent, agent and agentless ways of being able to go out, collect the information in our, completely across our network, all the infrastructure that's there and take that information and do something really special with it. Lots of different things that we can do with it, but I want to show you a couple of things really, really quickly today. I, I want to leverage the assets. I want them to do the work. Yep. Um, I want to optimize the spend across uh, the ecosystem, and I want to do it in a nature positive way. Right. So if we can go to the demo then, let's just start with what we have, right? So as I said, we've gone out and been able to collect information on that half a million assets throughout the organization. And you can see as you as we obfuscated the hyperscalers and our own off-cloud infrastructure. This is just a complete view. This is a complete, complete view. view across inside our firewall and it's in complex inside our firewall exactly. and across all our hyper, uh, our great partners, uh, Hyperscaler 1, 2, and 3. Right. So basically we can click down and drill down into the report and understand where yeah. our on-prem is, or where our, um, our uh, hyperscalers are, and where we're deployed. And again, when you think about it, you're thinking about the metadata that we're collecting sure. from these machines, right? So we want to know, was it, from a platform perspective, is it um, virtual? Is it Unix? Is it Windows? You want to know if it's physical or virtual, et cetera. So this is just the basic information sure. that we're working with. But what's really cool is when we begin to take this information and we enrich it with additional information from our data lake. So one of the feeds that we can get from our hyperscalers, which is pretty easy to get at an API level, yeah. is our billing information. Yeah. Right? So this is a big step. We're investing in yeah. these interfaces. We're investing in a module. So where you're not just doing discovery or observability, but we're going to give you the financial profile across these assets. Right. So we take that information that we're enriching it, correlate it to the, all the assets that we have inside the organization, and we understand our spend. And I just want to take a time out. You see at the top there, Aviator poking its way in to dashboards. And yep. I think that's a really cool thought when you think about yeah, it. Dashboards just, are a way of consuming like information. It's like we're on the web today, the, the internet today, you get an AI response first up on top. Your side of the software, you get an aviator uh, response. First. Exactly, right? So you're beginning to you know, kind of read the analysis that's done for you beforehand. And then some of that analysis is basically, right now our, st our spending is looking to be relatively stable for the next month. It's about the same as it was last month. We're on a run rate that's going to get us there. That's just the basic spending information that's available to us yeah. by enriching and using the data lake underneath the, and correlating it to the information in the CMDB. And we can drill down from that and look at the, the um, costing for storage, for compute, et cetera, and understand where we want to put our applications. So easy. You said, you mentioned the environment as well. Uh, nature positive. Nature positive. Right, so again, from, a, from an API yeah. perspective. We're investing in not just the discovery, the observability, but the financial platform. Right. We're, we're investing in correlating that with third-party data sources to tell you uh, the carbon footprint and we could even do the power footprint, but in this case, we're just showing the carbon footprint. Exactly, right? So you're yeah. enriching your data lake with the, the yeah. carbon information that we've got from third parties and from the, the hyperscalers themselves. Enrich that information. For a half million assets, we're producing a little over 21 metric tons of carbon uh, CO2. Per month, yeah. Yep. And you know, month. again, it, it gets kind of interesting, even the insight that you begin to get from that. If I drill into one particular hy hyperscaler and look at the elevated amounts, you can kind of see that the information that where we've got elevation is 
They, where they got, do say knowledge India. is power. It's knowledge is power, <laughs> and we and we understand yeah. that in India, a lot of the power that's generated in India is done through coal, right? And that's creating an additional carbon footprint. Yep. So we make decisions sometimes around how we're going to do it. Yep. So we're, we're investing this to be able to provide to CIOs that not just the, uh, the, the run observability, but the financial observability and the uh, nature positive observability. And then of course there's security. Yep. Your security and thinking about security, um, I'm not gonna show you this. This is not our live information inside of our organization. Yeah, we, we've corned, uh, uh, quarantined. We run this across our fleet, yeah. but we weren't gonna show it to you across our fleet. Right. We corned off a little zoo of vulnerability and pointed this to the zoo. Right, yeah. so again, we come back to, we've discovered all our assets. We know what they are. We know their Unix, their Windows, what's installed on them, et cetera. It's all there. And then we correlate that to the inbound vulnerabilities that are that are come from, from open sources. Those vulnerabilities are coming in. So in this zoo, there's 19, uh, uh, close to 1,000 active vulnerabilities. Exactly, and yeah. we only have, as it says there, patch coverage for about 25%. In other words, we've gone out and downloaded the patches from the vendor, whoever happens to have the vulnerability. Don't be worried, this is our test center. Exactly, thank you. And then we have created yeah. the automated policies to apply about a quarter of those against us. And you can come down here and see that we've got a bunch of vulnerabilities. What else could you do if this was a live environment? What else could you be doing here? Well, basically, yeah. it comes down to three things that you always want to do. So all windows, right? So all windows is basically, you know, how we would patch all of our windows machines. We can come in and we can do a couple of things, right? You want to remediate the issue, right? So typically what would happen is you would go so in. This is a human clicking these buttons. It's not a Gentic AI yet pressing the buttons for you. Well, but you can see it coming. You can see, well, those policies, our next step. those policies that were there are actual automated policies that go out and make sure the patches are applied. So you could create a new policy, is just like I said. Can we or, shut down the service? No, I mean, yes, I guess we could. All right, yeah. <laughs> um, okay, I, we could, but we're not going to, clearly. But you could just come in and shut down all the windows. See if you want me to say yes. <laughs> um, I don't know what happens, so. All right, okay. shut it down. All right, let's shut it down. Mark, I don't think we've done the right thing. <laughs> okay, turn it back up. That was Steven's drama, not mine. So. <laughs> All right, Th so. that, was, that was a really quick run through of the power. Open text data, yeah. uh, we discovered the assets across both inside our firewall and across hyperscalers. Um, complete inventory, observability, um, um, uh, spend observability, carbon observability, and vulnerability remediation. Right. And what we're talking about is yeah. the power of that single source of truth. And if you're thinking about what's coming with Titanium X as an example, that single source of truth is expanding in, in our ability to uh, now go into networks yeah. and discover all the network devices that are available, Wi-Fi, other types of networks, and be able to discover those as well. So building and building on that single source of truth and look at all the things you can yep. do with it. And tomorrow we're going to show the service management portions of this exactly. for our corporate help desk. Yep. Steve Lotto, thank you very much. Thank you, Mark.